everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildy Garden and in this video not only am I joined by just love that sound. A missile thrush. I'm sure you don't mind pausing to hear that. Anyway, what a lovely backdrop to have. So in this video we're going to be looking at how you can help birds in your own garden and in particular how to make a nest box for them. And the two boxes we're going to be focusing on in this video are blue tip and grey tip. Now I'm in the fabulous surroundings of Adlington Hall in Cheshire which is a place that I've been coming to for a few years now, I've been working on, we've done a wildflower meadow here, a big wildlife pond here and a coppice belt which I'll be doing another video on shortly and how you can manage that. Uh, but it's really such a fabulous setting, I'm surrounded by birds, you can probably hear blue tits and great tits already uh, around me and it's just absolutely a fabulous place to come and spend a few hours so I'm absolutely delighted to be working here. So today's video, blue tits and great tits, how we can make a bird box for them, nice, easy, cheap, simple methods. Let's get to it. So the materials you're going to need to make one of these boxes are as follows. You're going to need a four foot or 120 centimeter length of pressurized timber. Now I use pressurized timber. You can of course use uh, sawn or untreated timber, which of course is just the natural wood in its natural form. However, it will want to be then painted because of course they will uh, degrade a lot faster if they haven't been treated or painted in any way as any external timber would. So I use pressure treated timber, then I don't generally have to paint them and these things last for you know, anywhere from five to 15 years, depending on where they are and uh, how you look after them. So no problem at all. So a nice pressure treated piece of timber, four foot or 120 centimeters long. Then depending on the method, and you can do this in one of two ways, you can either use a hammer and nails and for fixing the box together, I just use these 40 millimeter, uh, they are galvanized round wire nails which lasts very well outside. So you can use them just for fixing the box together along with a hammer, good old hammer. Or if you wanna make a bit more of a substantial box, you can use uh, screws and um, a drill, of course, if you've got one. I've got a little impact driver here, uh, but a normal combi drill will do. And that, there are again, 40 mil screws. You don't need any bigger than that for one of these boxes. They are four by 40 mil, sheridized. You can see the color of them. So they last very well outside. Uh, and a drill, obviously, I'm not promoting DeWalt, I'm not sponsored by DeWalt in any way, shape or form. Uh, they're just a very trusted brand that I use. And uh, that's about it for the fixings of the box. Now, there's two ways you can make the entrance hole. One is to either use, if you've got a drill, these, what's known as these flat bits, which as you can see, are depending on the blue tit and the great tit. Great tit need a bigger hole, they're a 28 mil blue tip will fit into a 25 mil and we'll come on to why to use these different two different size holes in a little while but a flat bit if you're going to use a drill if not you can of course make access to these boxes by just cutting a notch out the corner of the side of the box which again we will look at a little bit later on so that's everything you need for making the box oh, apart from these hinges so I often nice little touch put a little hinge just this is just known as a four inch T hinge uh, which you can get from most DIY stores uh, which you can put on top of the box just to allow you access in and out to clean and maintain the box and um, we'll come on to box maintenance a little bit later so that's all you're going to need for the actual box itself now for fixing the box depending on where you're going to put it you can of course either attach it to a house wall or uh, a, an old tree stump or anything like that so if you just need to you can use uh, a hammer and nails Obviously, uh, again, a 40 mil, a 40 to 50 mil nail, round wire nail, something like that, galvanized will be fine. If you're gonna fix it to the side of a garage or a house, then you're gonna need some of these. These are raw plugs. Uh, these are just uh, 30 mil raw plugs, which should be fine uh, in a mortar joint. So you're gonna need a drill to drill those out. And of course, then a drill bit, which is a masonry bit to drill into the side of a house or building. Make sure it's your building you're fixing it to before you fix it. And then of course some screws to obviously fix the box to the side of the house or building. So that's about all you're gonna need. You can use one of these adjustable squares. If you haven't got one, don't worry. The beauty of it is, did I mention saw? I don't think I did. 
you're going to need a nice saw. <laughs> One that preferably hasn't been used for cutting roots in your garden or anything like that. Nice sharp saw so you, so you can get some really crisp clean cuts on your timber. Now if you haven't got one of these adjustable squares do not panic you can actually nice little hint, uh, hint and tip for you uh, most saws have a 90 degree a 90 degree angle just there so you can actually place your saw on the timber like that mark a line there and that should be in theory 90 degrees so don't panic if you haven't got an adjustable square I've got a little adjustable bevel here which you can use to mark the angle which we're going to use on top of the uh, box for the lid but again this isn't exactly necessary you can do it without it with a bit of a forethought so that's all you're going to need let's now look at how we're going to mark the box and start cutting the sides okay so two vital ingredients I forgot to mention a moment ago one is a pencil which was behind my ear so I'm sure you'll excuse me and two a tape measure it doesn't have to be an eight meter tape like this one as long as it measure, measures over a meter you're absolutely fine so that to one side it's now time to mark out the timber and get the sides the back the front and the roof and everything cut so for doing this I'm going to show you the measurements I've used I've based all these measurements by the way on the British Trust for Ornithology the BTO website who very kindly came and uh, sent a volunteer actually to ring the cuckoo if you haven't seen my cuckoo rescue do check that out uh, a bit of an incredible story that was but the BTO very kindly um, sent out a ringer to ring the cuckoo as I say now their website is absolutely fantastic I'll put a link in underneath in the description of this video so you can click on that it's got all the templates for all the size boxes you want to build whether it's owl boxes or bird boxes of any sort blue tick great tip robin all the ones we're going to be looking at then do check it out it's a fantastic website and i certainly reference it a lot when i'm making these things now the sizes you're going to need are as follows so i've already marked this one out as you can see but i have here the r which is the roof now the roof itself is 200 millimeters uh, long and then you can mark out the back uh, ba this is the back that's 300 millimeters you can make the back plate a little bit longer if you want that, that will just give you a little bit more, more room above and below the box itself to uh, fix to whatever you're fixing it to so uh, I generally tend to do mine a little bit longer maybe 350 or 400 mil just to give you a bit more leeway but you know 300 is fine um, then we've got the front which is 175 millimeters so that's the front where we're going to drill the hole later on for the birds to enter and exit this box then we have the two sides now as you can see I've done an angled line down there the front of the side if you like so the bit that's going to be at the front of the box is 175 millimeters to match the front and the back which goes against the back plate is going to be 200 millimeters this law makes sense when we cut it out don't worry if you're not quite catching me on this so 175 millimeters one side 200 millimeters the other and again reverse on this side you've got 175 here 200 mil there so you finish on a nice square edge which will leave you 120 millimeters for your floor which we'll put some drainage holes in later on and you will see as we come on to that so that's your timber marked out it's time to get it cut just a friendly word of warning before you start this guys just be careful of any splinters quite often rough sawn timber means exactly that it is rough sawn so you might have a few loose bits along the edge that can yeah go in your fingers quite easily so just check for that before you start moving this timber about and cutting it equally using a sharp blade do ideally wear gloves uh, just in case you slip and uh, cut your hand these things are quite sharp when they're new so just bear that in mind just another little tip for you when you are cutting through your timber a uh, free carpentry lesson for you uh, make sure you hold the piece you are cutting because as you get towards the end of the cut if you don't it can drop and tear off and tear some of the wood from the next bit you're cutting from so uh, just a little tip for you
Okay, so that's all the timber cut. Hopefully that wasn't too challenging. So we start to get an idea now of what we've got in terms of pieces. So obviously you've got your back plate and then you've got your two sides which are effectively going to go like that. Uh, you've got your roof which will obviously sit on top. Nice little bit of overhang on the roof as you can see just to give uh, a bit of cover over the hole where the birds are going to go in and out and you've got everything you need as a flat pack kit to now start to put this box together. So as I say I'm going to use screws on this one you can use nails and I will do an example with that uh, method that I'll put in the video just to show you it's so easy with nails it, it really is like I say so I'm going to start organizing these now but firstly what you want to do is mark out where you've got two of your sides so both your side pieces and you, as you can see the angle of those is going to be key to allowing the water to run off the top of your bird box quite nicely which is a great little idea so what you need to do is position your uh, position your sides on your back plate allowing for your roof so if we kind of mock this up if you like your sides a bit like that this is your bottom this is your top your roof is going to sit on there like that so it gives you an idea now how the box is going to look just make sure you've got enough room and the kind of the gap on this side of the box uh, on the back plate is the same as this side here as I say you can see it's just a little bit tight with these dimensions for getting a fixing in but you can still do it and I will show you how so if we measure that you've got about an inch and a half there or 35 mil something like that um, at the bottom we've got yeah an inch and a half 35 mil so that's about where you want to be when you've sorted that and you know you're roughly about equidistant from the top and the bottom you can of course mark either side just so you know where they're going to go equally I would then mark where your side the top of your side piece is because of course once you take your roof away you're not going to know well, obviously you want to allow for your roof on the top so to make sure you've got enough room for a fixing above and below like I say so 35 mil this side and to the mark where your roof was 35 mil that side perfect same with the bottom and come down a little bit and again a pencil line so you know where you're looking on that now here comes the fun part <laughs> trying to do all this upside down to get a fixing in so timber on and at this point I would mark the sides the marks you've just done on the front I'd mark the sides uh, as well because that's going to be a good indicator as to where the bottom of your side piece is going to sit on your back plate so we've got a mark there and a mark there, sawdust in my eye. Do wear some glasses if you if you don't want to get any sawdust in your eyes for this as well, by the way. Um, okay, so we now have two marks that we can line up with the bottom of the side plates. Like that and like that. And if I just turn that round, it should stand up of its own accord. So as you can see, if you can just make out that pencil line I did there comes in very handy with lining the bottom of the side up with the back plate. So now comes the fun part, fixing it. So do get someone to help you at this point if you want someone to hold the box steady while you're about to fix, but I'm gonna get my drills and get a couple of screws in it. So I've got some screws now and without throwing them on the floor, there you can see 40mm Sheridized screw, perfect for the job. So I'm now going to fix two in the back on each side, just to give it plenty of strength. Just come down when you do your first screw, come down a couple of inches so that you don't risk splitting the side plate. And just come in about half an inch on the side. 
okay you don't have to go all the way home with these things as long as it grips and just gets a bite into the side piece that's absolutely fine so let's get the back one in now so that side is now completely fixed up when you come to fixing your other side obviously you might want to just check as you can see that is nicely fixed on there now nice and sturdy so same with the other side but do check sometimes when you're fixing one side don't just go and try and put two screws in on the other side because these can shift obviously when you're putting a, a screw in the side of it and of course like I say at this point in time you don't have to use a drill you can just use a good old hammer and nails which is equally as satisfying if not more so I think so a couple more screws in this side that's one there we go okay we're starting to look like a box they're nicely fixed on just check if you're using screws obviously that you haven't gone too far inside and your screws are poking through and not quite gripping into the side so if they are obviously just take the screw out the back and move it to where you want but you can see the screws there I've just come in maybe about 10 or 12 mil half the depth of this timber here to make sure it goes right in the middle of the timber bit of an art but again with practice if you're not quite confident just use a good old hammer and nails so two side pieces are on nice and sturdy now it's time to think about your front so your front piece remember with your F <laughs> now this one typically I've chosen has a nice big knot which the carpenters of you out there will know that trying to drill through that uh, is really good fun so I'm gonna have fun trying to drill a hole through that for the uh, the the hole for the birds to get in itself so what I might do is actually put that towards the top uh, the hole when it goes in so we'll look at that in a minute okay now this should fit quite nicely on the front you can just drop the front down just a, a tiny bit because once you have your um, without putting a, an angle on this front piece obviously when your top sits on this bit is flat and this bit is angled so of course you're going to have a tiny little gap on this corner but it's not a problem so when you're fixing it just make sure you are down just a fraction on that then obviously make sure your sides are lined up and then you can get a fixing in don't worry if one side isn't quite lining up with the other side at the moment because you can move them about a little bit to line up with this front piece as long as you are flush on the side that you are fixing that's all you need for now Again, just so the screw tightens up not too tight that you start splitting the timber you can pre-drill these of course uh, but generally I find with these four mil screws they are quite a thin screw so they go through the timber quite nicely without causing too many issues now it's, you can just see that this timber here is just wanting to uh, just step inside a little bit so you can of course now just bring the side out to wherever you need it to be to be in line with the face before you send the screw in so just line that up press down and then put your screw in and the same with the side put your screw in first a little bit just to grip and then you can feel that flush on the front with your thumb when it's flush 
think you're screwing. Okay, even more like a box now. So that's the two sides and the front on. Uh, we're now going to look to get the, the bottom in, which can sometimes be a bit of a squeeze. Okay, so now I know earlier on in the video I said to cut the base at 120 millimeters. Uh, that's not quite the case with this one. I was thinking about it when I measured out, but actually the best way to do it is just get your, because the timber thicknesses vary a little bit, depending on where you get the timber from. When you come to cut your base, just measure it first. So this is about 100 and, 103 millimeters, something like that. So I'm just gonna trim this one down a little bit so that it will, as you can see at the moment, it's just a little bit too big to fit in the gap. So I'm gonna take this down to 103 mil and then that should be enough so you can mark top and bottom and then remember I said about the saw being 90 degrees on this angle well you'll see why that comes in handy now because you can just put the saw against the edge of the timber as you can see if I lift that up that creates a nice square line for you to then be able to draw your line across Perfect. Let's get it cut. So this is proving a little bit tricky, but we just need to take a thin strip off the edge of this so it can go in vertically. So with a little bit of look, that should now fit. There we go, look at that. Nice and snug. So once you've got once you've got it all flush either side then just turn the box on its side and then of course you can just put a single screw you don't need more than one screw on either side just to hold it and the same with the other side So, that is your base on, your front on, and your two sides on. It's now time for the roof. Now for this bit, I recommend, as you see I've just done there, sitting it on the side of your table or workbench. It's just that little bit easier to see what you're doing. And we're gonna need the hinges now, so go and grab those. So, I now have my T-hinge, which I'm just loosening up a little bit make sure there's plenty of play on that and you can see it's a lovely four inch t-hinge these are class as and they are available in most diy stores you can have used a galvanized can of course use a galvanized finished one i just like these black ones i think they're a nice little touch uh, quite sort of rustic looking so yeah just check with the screws on these because quite often the screws that they send with them these are a 30 mil screw so as you can see because this timber is only 25 mil you put a screw through that, it's going to stick out the back when you try and fix the hinge to the lid. Uh, sorry, to the, the back plate. Equally with the roof, if you fix down into the roof, you're going to have the tips of these screws poking through, obviously, where the birds are going to be nesting, which is not ideal. So, these screws are a little bit long for the job. So, what I've done is I've bought some 25mm exterior uh, wood screws, which are really nice. They're exactly the same, they're just a little bit shorter. As you can see, uh, a really nice screw. So that will just tie in with the black on the T-hinge. Now, make sure your roof is on. It's all flush down both sides and you can put your T-hinge in the middle, roughly in the middle of the back of your plate. So as you can see there, just center it roughly with your eye. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course, but about an inch and a half by the looking at that. Uh, and then get your, get your screws, three for the top, 
put them in the top. When you're putting these screws in, um, same with any uh, screws you're putting in with a bit of metal work before the timber, obviously don't go in all guns blazing with the drill because it can then just either round the head of the screw off or just keep spinning the screw in the top of the timber which then becomes loose and doesn't actually grip very well. So yeah, just a, a little note for you there. So the top hinge is now on and you can now put the screws in the back if you can see turn it up this way for you so the screws are in the top of the hinge and into the roof now time to put the screws onto the back so again just line up make sure your sides are all flush down both sides the roof with the side panels and then you can put your three screws in the top Again, just so they nip up, doesn't have to be really, 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 really tight. There you have your hinged lid which is nice now for just accessing uh, the, the at the end of the season quite often if we talk for a moment a little bit about box maintenance now at the end of the season um, obviously the birds come August the end of August time will have no doubt finished their broods it's best just to clean the nest boxes out and just pour some boiling water in to sterilize them uh, just to get rid of any fleas and ticks or anything like that just so that there's nothing overwintering in them uh, so yeah, do check them and this is a good way of doing it. Now on the sides, a good way to keep this side from sort of flapping around in the wind is just to either put uh, a screw in the top and the bottom and then a little bit of wire uh, or sort of, you know, screw in the side and then in the, um, in the roof, the side of the roof itself and a little bit of wire or something around it. Um, or you can get the little hook to eyes which you can put in, you can screw in the side and just keep this lid fastened down. So I'll put a little fastener on that in a little while. So now it's time to look at the hole of the box. Now, if we talk for a moment about hole sizings, um, blue tits are a slightly smaller bird than a great tit. So they will be able to get into a slightly smaller hole, a 25 mil hole or about an inch diameter. Whereas great tits are a little bit bigger, they'll want a 28 mil hole to be able to fit in. So the reason you do a 25 mil hole is because being the bigger bird and a little bit dominant, more dominant sometimes, Great tits can of course force blue tits out of a box if they can access it. However, to make things fair, I'm putting up six of these around the garden, well, actually nine of these around the garden. So I'm gonna do half of them with a 25 mil hole, half of them with a 28 mil hole for the great tits. So it's nice and fair, there's enough uh, for everyone, hopefully all being well. It's a nice big walled garden this, so there's plenty of opportunity to put some boxes up. So 25 mil hole for blue tit, 25, 28 mil hole for great tit. That's all you need to remember. I'm going to get my drill bits now and then we can start to look at where we're going to put the hole in the front. Okay, so I've got the spade bit, if you like, the flat bit of the drill now. Be careful, these are quite sharp, so just watch your fingers on the ends. So I'm going to be using this to make the hole in the, uh, the front of the box, not the top of the box, uh, the front of the box. Now, you really want to be aiming for almost as high as possible. Uh, I see so many bird boxes where the holes are in the center of the box or towards the bottom almost. And you know this is just such a waste because the birds obviously need a fair depth of room to build their nest from moss and uh, leaves and things. So obviously they don't want the hole to be right on top of the nest. It's nice, they prefer to go in in the hole and then drop down into the nest. So I put mine probably three quarters of the way up the face of the box. So, let's get it drilled out. 
and obviously in the center if you can you can put holes on the side of course as well it doesn't really matter too much but generally speaking a nice hole on the front will suffice so a little bit of guesswork with this but somewhere in the middle So, there we have a nice little 25mm hole, perfect for a blue tit. Now when you have finished your hole, just open the lid and just check inside that you haven't got any sharp edges or splinters. Uh, there's a little bit that has peeled off into there, but yeah. There you have one times ready to put up blue tit box. Now the only other thing you've got to do before you put this up is to pre-drill a couple of holes either side of the hinge and one in the bottom so that you can put your fixings in whether that's a nail or in fact a screw so I'm going to get a few more of these made and we'll look at putting them up shortly. Can't wait. So the last thing that's left to do on this box now is of course as I've just said put the holes in the top for the fixings and a hole in the bottom also you just want a few holes in the base of the box uh, just to allow for a little bit of drainage and a little bit of uh, air ventilation in there so I usually just put three or four in the bottom and again that's quite easy to do yeah it doesn't look like much but just helps so a few little holes in the bottom and equally now we just need to do the holes in the side of the box or the top of the box one either side for fixing and one in the bottom so you can see I've just done the hole there and two at the top one either side of the hinge so that would just make it easier for when you are putting your fixings in as I say you can use nails or screws it doesn't really matter it just depends on what you're fixing the box to really so uh, there we have one times little blue tip box all ready for putting up well that's a good chunk of boxes made as you can see there got seven boxes so I've done four with the 25 millimeter flat bit so that's for the blue tits and three with the great tits I will do another great tit one if light permits this afternoon but uh, yeah I've got quite a bit of work now to get these up and yet to make some robin boxes and do check out my other vid on how to make a robin box if you haven't already so I've got uh, as I say three to put up so now we're going to look at where the best position is to put these boxes generally north and east facing is absolutely key for any bird box because west and south facing can become too hot in the late spring and summer months especially for birds who have second broods uh, like these tit species so yeah it can be a bit of a problem the birds can actually die in the nest the chicks can die if it gets too hot so north and east facing nice and cool unless you've got some cover in which case robin boxes obviously you can stick in some ivy it doesn't seem to be too much of an issue as long as the wall or whatever you're putting it on doesn't get too hot so let's go and have a look at these boxes where we can put them up and uh, yeah get them a new home so there we have the first box in the tree this is one of the blue tip boxes and all I've done on the side of the box is actually put two nails one in the roof and one in the side of the box uh, and just some wire in between and then by simply tying that lid down it's going to minimize the risk of obviously squirrels getting in anything like that stoats weasels and trying to predate um, these chicks of course which they will do now I've actually nailed the uh, the box on and for those of you that are thinking oh no nails going into a live tree obviously you can tie these uh, boxes on if you want to I don't have any uh, big rope or anything with me but you can tie them on but all I would say is if you're doing that I mean it's a very very minimal hole less than if you were to remove a branch from a tree of course which many of us do so these trees have a remarkable ability to heal over so the nails won't actually harm the tree so by putting them in and leaving a little bit proud on the edge of the box that way when the tree does grow and the girth of the tree expands the nest box can sort of push out onto that nail rather than the nail or the nest box be pushed over the nail and then of course you're going to struggle to get them off in time 
do periodically check the nails every year of course to see if they want loosening or new ones putting in obviously the last thing you want is to be harming these trees in any way so box number one up let's go get some more up So that's box number two up and obviously this is east facing as I say north or east facing please keep remembering that and this is obviously in a lovely nice shady spot so it should be quite nice. Generally with tip boxes anything from sort of head height upwards to whatever height you want to go up to really they will nest but anywhere below that I don't think they feel safe enough to actually nest so if you can kind of six foot and above yeah hopefully that will be occupied in no time. Oh, I'm liking this. So that's three boxes in this area. So I've got this one here, one over my shoulder there, and one in the distance. You can see um, on the end tree over there, I've got another one on the cherry tree behind that. So in terms of spacing of boxes, obviously these birds do have a territory. The way I see it, the more boxes you have, the more options they've got. So although it's highly unlikely that three birds will nest in all three of these boxes, um, it might just be that one prefers one of these three boxes but at least they have lots of options so you know a lot of people say to me well I've already got a box in my garden I don't need more rubbish you can never have enough bird boxes in a garden I've got about seven or eight in mine it's only an average size garden and I'm going to put some more up this weekend so yeah positioning wise north and east facing as we've said and spacings wise I mean ideally you know these birds will probably nest you might get a couple of pairs in a back garden in an average back garden you know if they're sort of 20, 30, 40 yards apart, but um, they can get obviously a bit territorial. Certainly not the same species. You might get blue tit and great tit, but it's highly unlikely you'll get two great tit, two pairs of great tits, for example, nesting in the same garden. So I'm mixing it up here. We've got a couple of blue tit, a couple of great tit boxes. So fingers crossed, let's go put some more up. Now when you're putting up these boxes it's important to remember as well that uh, birds aren't going to want to nest where there's a lot of disturbance so don't try and put a bird box up right next to your feeders. They just simply won't enjoy the uh, hustle and bustle of any activity around the box so they like to be nice and secluded and quiet so that's why I've put, if I step back a bit you can see I've got one on here, got one on this apple tree here I think, yes, yep and that one is the tree where a lot of the feeders are hung so I've left that out so there's a nice gap between uh, the nest the next box along before uh, you get to the feeding station and then after that they're on the tree belt behind my head where I've put three or four boxes already so one more box to go on the uh, north facing wall behind the camera now along with the coppice belt uh, which I'm going to coppice shortly uh, and do check out the video on that you will uh, no doubt enjoy what we've planted and what has actually become of this lovely coppice but which is a fantastic habitat for birds now so do check out that video after this one if you have the chance but yeah I've got one more box to put on on the wall over there and then uh, yeah that's it job done so for this box I'll be putting it on this beautiful old wall now this wall is probably a hundred plus years old absolutely enormous probably three meters or just over high so what a fantastic structure to have in your garden but anyway I'm going to be putting the box on this wall because it's north facing so it's going to get no sun absolutely perfect for the birds of course and also there is an absolute abundant source of food just behind the camera in this entire tree and coppice belt that I planted about four years ago now which is full of things such as silver birch rowan 
Gelder Rose, Hazel, Spindle. So it's an absolute haven for all the birds to move through here and pick insects and particularly caterpillars. Uh, blue tits and great tits obviously feed a lot of caterpillars so they're young. So it's a perfect habitat right on the doorstep. So a really good spot. So the first thing is to get yourself one of these drills if you're fixing it to a wall, as I say. You want a seven mil drill bit for using one of these rule plugs, which is a uh, as the one I showed at the start of the video, uh, a 30 mil roll plug, uh, just absolutely standard, the pence, these things, so they don't cost you a lot. So I've already marked on the wall where I'm gonna put my holes. So get the holes dr uh, drilled out, get the roll plugs in, and then I can fix the box up. old wall that's pretty tough <laughs> oh sorry about that sparrow hawk literally trying to take down a jackdaw in the garden well wow. i've never seen that before you probably heard the commotion the jackdaw got away luckily blimey not seen that before so yeah raw plugs in the wall now next thing is to get yourself some screws Here's some I purchased earlier. Again, these are just 50 mil screws, uh, sheridized screws, which means they are very good for outdoor use. So three of those and my little impact driver. So I can just pop these in the holes where they need to be without dropping them ideally. Just so you're not trying to hold the box up, hold the screw up and fill, put them in the wall at the same time. So I'm just literally just hand turning these into the hole just to save me a lot of picking up screws. So then line your box up and hopefully I'll put the, drill, the holes in the right place. Took a few goes, but yeah, in at last. So there you go. One sturdy, solid blue tit box mounted on this wall. So, well, that's it. Seven boxes built and erected in one afternoon. So you see, it doesn't take that very, that long. And it is so easy to do, of course. It costs just a few pounds with a few nail screws, you know, and a couple of bits of wood. It really doesn't cost a lot. So great project to get the kids involved with. And please, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer. In terms of maintenance of these boxes, then obviously just clear out the old material at the end of the season. So September, October onwards, when the birds have finished nesting, and that way you can then pour boiling water in there just to kill off any last fleas or anything so that they're not there overwintering uh, and waiting for the new birds to arrive in the spring of course and cause them a few headaches so that's maintenance covered as i say any questions drop them below thanks so much for watching do feel free to like the video and give the channel a subscribe if you've enjoyed it I'm off to get out of the rain, uh, but first I've got a bit of coppicing work to do. So stay tuned on the channel. Uh, there will be a coppicing video to come shortly. And as I say, this coppice belt here is really such a stunning sight now. I'll try and come back and show you the rest of this meadow, pond and everything else that I created here about four years ago in the summer months when it's an absolute picture and a blaze of colour. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we might have some few, a few tits in the boxes. Um, so yes, thank you very much. Please, please subscribe to the channel if you can. It just helps. It goes a long way and you'll get notified, of course, if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell of my next video. Wind's picking up. I'm going to get on with the coppicing. Thanks, guys. I'll see you soon.